Quatre-ba, <coughs> Shanjusanghanamji Lanchet, 
Lana may buy on the birds over Janjib Kurash, you are talking to your country, Mamchiba. Tom Mamchiba, and the young double to band of Tungru, you woke, Zungru, you woke, Maumber, you give a pot on Rigivo, most not the year at the Lando Tinder Tavala, the Sumber, you Tambak and Gundan Dabim Dor Tinder Tavala, Mubad on the Bad on Chamad and Kunda Chipper Jabad on the Bad on Yikin Javad on Jandala, Jessica Jerati, and the Tamba New River. Yo, what, Jimber, yo, Jum, then they did a hot temper, yo, what, Jum, then they did in under Tabim Dordin de la Mubada. Raptin Jiver Giratin and Jum, then they shan't do some ha. Ah, shan't do some half shamber, shin give labor, river, yo, what, in a Jum, then they give shan't do some half shamber, la Lorso, 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 Jisha, Jenny, Lorso, Lorso, Shamba, Chuji, sixteen, a lobber of me, the Tejan Shabe, and Chudla, lobber of me, but the largest year on. On our own Zato, the name Shanjus and Vati Dok, a young chick that sing the kitchen, Meso, John Dundee, Doctor Tian, Tivian Shabby, on some young and then a Sandy Jan Suso named Chitty. Tivian Shabby is Handy Jib Shanjib, Jibber, Jibber, Jogo, Rikiva Tedakian, Muber, Jogo, the name John Dundee, the name John Dundee, La Jarbo Chimbo, Jitian, the kitchen of Sordo, John Dundee, Tong Dan, Tong Hirdan, Tong Dardan, Yern Kurdan. Jarbu Pujan Korkanda, Gana, Chuji, John Dertav, Shobad, and Chabad, and Yanta Bertombad, and Tedor Jundan de Doctor Jarbu Chimbo, Ji, Yan, Hombad, and Jiba, Jumbad, and Jiba, and Kurdan Jiba, Teril, Yambi Lat and Cho, Chunyan Bati, Hosan Kurig, the Chini Yan, Chumala, Tedor La Lotavada, Halangan Sorak and Gitian, all of my neighbors, Tumor Jogo, Tin Jundan de Gizet on the back and go along the Kuchi, Kasardo, Kungao, Chuji, Chuji, Namdan de Zonch, Chonju, Rjan, Nian, Rjan de Lion, Yachira, Yan de Bertunju, Sora, the Ku, Chuji, Namdan de Zonga, Lerna, Jundan de Gichuji, Namdan de Manchella, Natural Zonger, Jundan de Gikasara, Kungao, Tisha, Chuji, Namdan de Tumami Petro de Tamba. Down, tricks of Jarrah, Nilgem, Wumber of the Bat, down, some give me to be a number of Tarvel Legacy, Jim, Shavi, Jan, Shavi, Nam John the Tavo, Gunga, or Chuchi Zonju, John Dungi, Terkichi, Gasarni, Lazamba, Jamami, but Jarbadan. Jarujon the Jarbadan, set on them by Gunga, or on Shantus and what Tedard on Yan Tuchimbo, Tedard on Tamjat on them being called Tedard on Had on Mud on Hamayan down, Jazad on Jib and Jitin Yerandi, Jum Dundi Jumbala, Mumber of Todo, Munji Jurado, Tambi Chutapi Legos de Cherni Pago, Pabatramami Petrobajisha, Tabachimbun Dorte Zoxo, Sholo Gaston, Yet Gia, Ste, Wambo Trico, Lozava, Lozava. Vandi Chuni the Sutram de Jerjan Jide Tanla Papa Wo Now, we are on the last class of the Malakurti Sutra. The teaching, or the style of it, is rather similar to the previous ones. The only difference is that we will have a short uh, tuk offering after the class. And uh, we'll continue also uh, with our discussion group after the tuk offering. It will be a bit late, but uh, I think it's okay because it will be quite meaningful and valuable and a memorable event. So let's have uh, the class on the bestowal chapter first. The Malakirti Sutra, uh, in fact, I think we have 65 classes previously, and we have uh, 66 classes 
This, this class is our 66 classes, and this paper I'm showing you right now has all the numbers of people listening. You probably can't see the specific numbers. On the first day, we had the most people attending. And then later on, uh, we had less people, but uh, the number was rather quite steady. The number of people listening to it, in fact, it was a lot. Many people listen to the sutra, that's great. And now we finally, we're finally at the last chapter, the chapter of Bistao, where Shakyamuni Buddha then bestowed the Dharma to Maitreya. The Ati teachings are bestowed to the three protectors, and uh, Illuminous Essence was bestowed to the protectors as well as Bodhisattvas. So it's a gift bestowing to the uh, next generation who has good connection, auspicious connection to the Dharma. So I think this is quite a meaningful that we're listening to this Dharma. The merit of listening to the Dharma, I think I've uh, emphasized it before, and according to the Sutra of Sublime Dharma of Clear Recollection, where it says, due to listening to the Dharma, one's mind can be tamed. And with the mind being tamed, the darkness of ignorance causing one to wander in samsara can be dispelled. In fact, without listening to the Dharma, we'll continue to wander in, this dar in the darkness of samsara. Therefore, we're listening to the Dharma, and listening to the Dharma brings the immeasurable mer uh, merits. And this is said uh, by the, this is told by the Buddha through his larger speech. So of course, we need such merit. I think what's more important is to understand the profound teaching of the Dharma. And we should also keep in mind, we should later on to propagate such Dharma to all the other sentient beings as well. I think we've su successfully came so far. We, lots of you, in fact, started the teaching and didn't even interrupt once in between. This is quite difficult. Many people nowadays, they want to do something like this, but they probably don't have such kind of causes and conditions. Therefore, for all of our audience here today, I think from one aspect, I can call you all winners. Because there are people who feel that they've completed their, um, they've, they, they've uh, uh, succeeded in building their empire of companies, of uh, enterprise, and so far, and they feel really arrogant about it. In fact, that kind of merit is really short. And our merit and our success coming from listening to this dharma would last for lifetimes, and the merit that comes with it cannot be expressed by speech. So, so bestow, what does that mean? It means carrying the responsibility, carrying what responsibility? The responsibility of the Tathagata to express to expound, to practice the dharma that's taught in this text to um, the generation, to the sensual beings who have auspicious connection to this particular dharma. So it has a such meaning. Also, it has the meaning of uh, accumulation as well. So sometimes it is called differently in the Chinese language. In general, what it means is that now the Tathagata has already bestowed this teaching to Maitreya as, uh, as well as all the bodhisattvas present at that time, the four protectors, and the Shravakas, 
especially Ananda. So different audiences will have different uh, uh, roles and uh, for example, Maitreya, who is the future Buddha, he has a responsibility. Why was it not bestowed to Vimalakirti? Because Vimalakirti, in fact, came from a different uh, pure land. And uh, he was the one who requested it and uh, expounded the Dharma. Therefore, his job is done. So the main responsibility went to Maitreya Bodhisattva, who is the future Buddha. Why not, a, why not a Mantrashri, who is the foremost of wisdom? In fact, Mantrashri doesn't have a set place to stay. He wanders around to different places to benefit sentient beings. So he doesn't really abide in a certain place. And he's not like a Maitreya Bodhisattva, who in fact will have a set place. Maybe I'm using a negative word of wandering around. In fact, uh, Mantrashri does wander around to the Naga's palace, to the celestial realm, and uh, to different places to expound the Dharma and, uh, and uh, benefit such beings. Therefore, the responsibility goes to the future Buddha, Maitreya Bodhisattva. So at this point, the Buddha told Maitreya Bodhisattva, saying that, Maitreya, I now bestow on you this Dharma of Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi which I have accumulated over immeasurable coatings of asamkhiyas of kalpas. In fact, this dharma did not was not accumulated by Shakyamuni Buddha for a very short period of time. He practiced ascetic practice went through hardship and uh, practiced uh, and accumulated uh, uh, lots of merit throughout Kotis of Asamkayas of Kalpas in order to accumulate such a profound dharma that is like the Amrita. So today, Shakyamuni Buddha told Maitreya Bodhisattva saying that I am going to bestow this dharma to you. Sutra of this type should during the final period of after my nirvana be circulated extensively throughout Jambuvipa by you and others with your numinous power. In fact, numinous power translated to the modern language, you could say that blessings or some kind of power that cannot be explained. People sometimes don't understand what blessing is. According to Kumar Jiva's explanation at that time, he called it a numinous power. He called it a numinous penetration sometimes. That it means the blessings and so on. So the Dharma is not cut off. So I was thinking up, uh, upon this and contemplating upon this. Today, we are studying this all together. Yes, it seems that this is quite simple. It seems that everything is so easy. In fact, in this dark age, we've already received this incredible blessings from Maitreya Bodhisattva. And after we received these blessings, so every one of us has this opportunity to listen, to contemplate, to practice, to, dis to have discussions upon this text. And it is because of these blessings. It is said in a commentary saying that the more supreme the path is or the Dharma is, the more vicious the Maras are. So without the protections of the protectors of the four celestial beings, without the Bodhisattva's blessings, without Ananda's help, without all of these uh, favorable 
conditions that came together, then maybe at first you won't even have any interest in it at all to begin with. Or maybe because of uh, some kind of difficulties that you could encounter during your life, maybe it's work and family and relationship and health and so on, you may interrupt from listening to this teaching. And now we're here at this last chapter. It is because of their blessings that we're in fact listening throughout, the, uh, throughout the whole text and listen to the whole text. So that is why Shakyamuni Buddha said that then Maitreya Bodhisattva, you should then, circ uh, you should then uh, expound this Dharma and uh, circulate extensively throughout the Jambuvipa. So I give you the teaching, I give you the loan, the oral transmission at the beginning with the Tibetan language, and then I recite it again in Chinese. So in this way, you receive such loan, such oral transmission in both ways, in both languages. So once you have this oral transmission, then you have this responsibility to then uninterruptedly pass down this teaching. I think everyone has this responsibility. It is on everyone's shoulders. Nowadays, during the teaching of the Vimalakirti Sutra, you can then observe and look around and see, are there any kind of classes that then uh, use so much time to explain this whole text and so many people listening to this text. It's really not that easy. We've spent so much time expounding this sutra. Last year we started on March 27th. So we used a year and a five month. Of course, this is not every day, but throughout a year and five months, we completed this sutra. Today is August 27th, so a year and five months exact. We spent such time to study together. And I think you must have had uh, some kind of feelings, some kind of insights about the chapters, about the sentences, about the teachings. The Dharma is really not that easy, and such a cause and condition is really not that easy. It's hard to say if I will ever have the opportunity to give this teaching again, because this is quite a long sutra. But I hope sincerely for lots of the students in our audience, especially the young ones, you have to, have to pass down this lineage. You have to then expound it to others to uninterruptedly pass down this dharma. Whenever I walk around after class, during the after class discussion group, I see that lots of people also participate in the after discussion group, and some of them um, never really even missed a day. So that's very encouraging. Next one, it says that, why? In the future time, there will be good men and women, as well as gods, dragons, Ashuras, Gandharvas, Raksha, uh, Rakshas, and so on. And who will generate the intention to achieve Anatalak Samyaksamati and who have the devotion towards this mind teaching and take pleasure in the great Dharma? So in the future, these good men and women, they have such big heart to, to give rise to bodhicitta. But if no one expound this teaching, then they don't have any opportunity to listen to the sutra. You cannot then just expect them to understand about themselves. So all these session beings, the gods, dragons, and so on, originally they had such, they ha they will have such opportunity. But if there is no one expounding this dharma, then they will lose their opportunity. Despite that, they're ready for the great dharma. 
So if they are unable to hear the sutra such as this, they will lose its good benefit. When people such as this hear this sutra, they must with great faith and joy realize their, their rarity and accept them with humility, explaining them extensively according to the benefits that sentient beings will receive from them. So, we must expound such dharma because if there's no one explaining the dharma, then how can anyone understand the dharma? So, there are people who have wisdom, but if they're not taught the dharma, then how can they understand it? So this is quite necessary. Yes, it seems that maybe people should expound it. But in fact, through this text, the gods, uh, dragons, uh, and uh, spirits, and ghosts, and Gandharvas, and Rakshas, uh, Rakshasas, and so on, they also need to listen to the Dharma. Maybe they're really smart. They also need a good Dharma teacher to give them teaching as well. There are people who are quite good at technology, who are good at arts, who are good at lots of worldly things. But if they don't have a Dharma teacher to start with, they won't understand the Dharma at all, despite their smartness. So, without anyone expounding the Dharma, it would be difficult for all the sentient beings to understand. That is why Shakyamuni Buddha said that the Treya Bodhisattva, you should use your numinous power to propagate Dharma. And you should have such kind of a spirit and such kind of intention and aspiration. Just as uh, the Avatamsaka Sutra stated, the Bodhisattva sees that sentient beings do not have right views and are always sticking to wrong views, thus expediently teaches profound Dharma to them to cause them to understand the genuine truth. So the Bodhisattva should use the, tr the skillful means to expound the Dharma so that the sentient beings could see the truth, see the ultimate truth. This is quite necessary. Kumar Jiva also said, without listening to the Dharma, it will, be di it will be easy to fall into the wrong path. Therefore, it is quite important to hear the Dharma teachings. Lots of people say that, well, maybe you can listen to it and maybe you don't have to. You may have such kind of question and doubts. There was a sutra where it talked about the Brahman, Brahman wisdom ocean, and uh, along with him, a thousand Brahmins who met a bhikshu who taught them emptiness. And uh, these Brahmins, they were very smart. They have lots of wisdom. And they felt that, well, this bhikshu really taught some uh, interesting philosophy. Therefore, they started uh, com contemplating upon this. And then throughout contemplation, they then understood emptiness and attained realization. Without a bhikshu expounding the dharma to them, they won't be able to understand. So you should really try to seize the opportunity, you should really try to seize the opportunity of listening to the Mahayana teaching so that it will eradicate your doubts, eradicate your wrong view, and so that you will cultivate the right, the sprout of right view to continue to grow so that later you will receive the fruition of a hope and uh, fruition of the ability of helping such beings. 
So Shakyamuni Buddha told Maitreya Bodhisattva that he should continue to expound such dharma in the future, because without expounding the dharma, then they won't be able to um, attain such a benefit, they will lose the opportunity. And then Shakyamuni continued to say, Maitreya, you should understand that bodhisattvas may have two characteristics. In fact, the bodhisattvas uh, or the beings who aspired for bodhicitta, they are the ones who started to aspire for bodhicitta. So what are these two kind of uh, characteristics? The first one, is the fountainness for miscellaneous phrases and literary embellishments. In fact, the first one is not so interested or not so... Um, they uh, did not really penetrate very deeply to the meaning, but they are very much attracted to the literary embellishments, to the very superficial words. Just as a group of us probably are very much fond of the poetry and uh, the li lyrics, they feel that, wow, this is written so well. I, wow, this just, wow, the, the lyric is just so beautiful. And the sutra is so well written. So they're very much they're trapped by the words, but not really to the content or the, uh, the inner meaning. And the second one is their lack of fear of penetrating deeply into the actuality of profound meaning. So when it comes to the emptiness and when we talk about uh, luminosity, when it comes to the second type of bodhisattva, they can understand and they can accept the profound teaching of emptiness as well as luminosity. According to treaties on the great perfection of wisdom, it says that the potent power of prajna affects two categories of people, frightens fool ones and delights the wise. So prajna, the teaching of prajna, which is the meaning of emptiness, for the ones who do not have wisdom, then they feel that, wow, this is really frightening. There's no Four Noble Truths. There's no uh, karma. There's no cause and fruition. And then they would feel really terrified. But there are the ones uh, who are really wise, and uh, through such <coughs> teaching, they will attain realization. Uh, have lots of teachings and stories like that. that. So you should understand that it is novice bodhisattvas, novice bodhisattvas. When Ponsa Gurumbuchi went to uh, Shichu, prefecture and halfway to there he stayed at a, uh, at a monastery and then out and inside that monastery two monks then uh, came out and said that are you novice and Pansu Rinpoche was really upset and uh, he said well then who are you if you are novice uh, if I am a novice so novice bodhisattvas are the ones who are very much attracted by the words, who are fond of mis miscellaneous phrases and literary, uh, literary embellishment. Those who lack the fear of entering into profound scriptures are without defilement and without attachment, and who upon hearing them become pure in mind and accept, maintain, read and recite and practice them as explained. You should understand that these kind of bodhisattvas are called the kind of bodhisattvas have been cultivating the path for a long time. So they can accept the profound scripture, the profound teachings with great delight. And whenever they hear such kind of teaching, their afflictions are purified, and they're very happy to uphold, to practice and recite 
Lots of people, they really enjoy chanting uh, the Heart Sutra, the Avatamsaka Sutra, the Lotus Sutra, and the more they chant such sutras, the happier, the joyful they are, the more joyful they are. Even if they don't completely understand what it's talking about, especially when they talk about, uh, uh, especially when they recite uh, the Heart Sutra, they recite uh, some sutras which teach emptiness. I think this is because of their habitual pattern or their good seed that they've planted before. Because without such good seed, then people would easily feel frightened or they'll feel they'll have wrong view, especially when it comes to lots of uh, the different act, uh, different. Uh, behaviors and actions taught in Tantra and Anand. when they hear upon this kind of profound activities, they would feel quite frightened. So there are the two types of people. According to Nagarjuna, he said that there are two categories, one very frightened, the other one really delighted. So you don't really have to then ask for predictions to see who you were in your previous life. All you need to do is to just watch your own mind to see whether you feel delighted or feel frightened. You don't need to go and ask, uh, can you uh, can you do a mo prediction to me? Can you then uh, make a prediction? Can you read my poem? You don't have to do that because if you are frightened, then you know that you don't have such you don't have as many of uh, uh, the seeds planted of emptiness in your previous life and vice versa. If you're very delighted when you hear upon such teaching of emptiness, then you know that you must have planted good roots and good seeds of uh, listening to the emptiness, uh, teachings of Mahayana. Before the teaching of emptiness, that you need to investigate, you need to observe whether the other person is ready. Is the other person a good vessel to receive such teaching? In Tantrayana, we talk a lot about the vessel of receiving the Dharma. Because if you're not the vessel, then the Dharma won't be benefit to you. Similarly, in Sutrayana, it also talks in such a way. It's uh, distinguishing the two types of vessels. So there are two types of dharma in Sutrayana. Uh, uh, regarding how the oracle novices are unable to be defined about the extreme profound dharma. So for the novice ones, there are two kinds of dharmas that they are not able to understand. So what are these two then? The first one is that when they hear profound sutras such as uh, the uh, bodhicitta aspect from Mahayana or the emptiness aspect of Sutrayana or uh, the Tantrayana teachings of skillful means, then when they hear upon this, they cannot accept it and they become really fearful and uh, generate doubts. And uh, unable to follow those sutras, filing them and lacking faith in them, and they would even say that I have never heard of this before. Where did it come from? They would even slander it, just as uh, some of the scholars. They would use their dualistic thoughts and conceptual mind to distinguish whether that teaching is right or wrong, just from their habitual understandings. Lots of the Dharma teachings are not exactly what this world teaches us because it is past these regulations and so on in this world. Lots of uh, Theravada teachings. Uh, uh, there are Theravada teachings, and uh, there are the teachings on emptiness, and there are, there, there are the teachings on uh, Tanagata Garba or the Buddha nature. So, from different kind of people, 
they understand the Dharma uh, accordingly to their vessel or receive the Dharma uh, according to their vessel. And there are people who don't understand such uh, teaching. Therefore, when they hear the kind of teaching that's not fitting to them, they will start to, they'll start to then um, slander such teachings. According to Xuanzang's translation over here, in fact, it talks about four aspects. The first one is that without listening, um, the second one is uh, generate doubts after listening. We don't necessarily have to follow this. We can just follow the way I, I taught. So what it means is that, first of all, they didn't listen. Second, the second kind or second type is that after they listen to the Dharma, they themselves cannot accept such teaching. And then the second is that, the second type of people is that when they are, when there are those who defend, maintain, and explain profound sutras, such as the, uh, such as nowadays, what I notice is that uh, after our class, I see lots of people would, um, not lots, but some people would walk out of the shrine hall with this angry expression. Maybe that's how they feel. I I don't know. Just, uh, I'm just guessing. Maybe not. So, the kind of people who defend, maintain, explain the profound sutra such as this, then the novices are unable to associate with these teachers, make offering to them, or revere to them, or at times they would talk about the teachers' transgressions and errors. They would slander behind their back. Not only they do not accept. The, these kind of teachings themselves, they would start to slander up, uh, slander uh, such teacher who expound this dharma or uh, defend and maintain this kind of dharma to others. So two aspects. This is from a personal aspect, what uh, from the vessel's aspect, and then from the dharma's aspect. So you should understand that those who have two dharmas are novice bodhisattvas. They only harm themselves, and they are unable to control their minds within the profound dharma. Now, the next part talks about the two kinds of dharmas. So Maitreya, there are two other dharmas concerning bodhisattvas who devoutly understand the profound dharma, but who still harm themselves and unable to attain forbearance of the non-arising of dharma. What are these two then? So the first is to uh, <coughs> Oh, okay. So the previous ones, in fact, the, the, the previous ones, uh, the previous paragraph goes with the previous two types where it talks about the vessel. And then from here, Maitreya, and then this part, starting from Maitreya, there are the two dharmas. Then over here, it talks about the bodhisattvas who devoutly understand the profound dharma is towards uh, this aspect. The previous one talks from the vessels, the person who's receiving the dharma's aspect, and this part, uh, this, the following two that we're going to talk about is from the aspect of dharma. And the first is to be is to belittle novice bodhisattvas and not instruct them. For bodhisattvas who devoutly understand the profound dharma, just as nowadays there were senior mon monastics, senior Buddhists, 
when they see the novice monks, nuns, or the new Buddhists, they would look down at them. Uh, what I heard from Ponsukur Rinpoche is that when he first went to Shichu to study in the, um, uh, in the Buddhist academy, lots of people, they really belittle him. They have no idea who he will be afterwards. Just as uh, some people, whenever they would uh, give oral presentation and uh, expounding the Dharma to, uh, for practice and uh, so on, other people would laugh at them, wow, where you come from? Where did you come from? You don't even understand such a simple things. Once you, once you attain my realization, you will see how juvenile you are right now. It's probably going to take you 10 years. So whenever we see the novice bodhisattvas, you would say that it needs 10 years. You need 10 years. So this is called to belittle the novice bodhisattvas and not instruct them. Not instruct them means that being very stingy in terms of teaching them. During the tutoring and uh, during the mentoring class and discussion group, a discussion group, you should uh, try your best uh, to share your knowledge. This would be better. Then the second is to understand the profound dharma, but with a discrimination and, ex and that grasps at characteristics. Over here, it means that though they understand from the superficial or, or from the literary aspect of the Dharma, but they do not understand the profound meaning of the Dharma. And from the Xuanzang's version of translation, it in fact, it says that it's to make monetary or material offering, but they do not know how to offer uh, to make the generous offering with the Dharma because when it comes to the offering of uh, material things they are very generous they know everything about it but when it comes to the offering of Dharma they would have to kind of turn right and wrong and uh, just uh, hitting the bush but not really get into the point because they don't understand so they only understand the very superficial aspect that is in terms of literary uh, meaning, but not really the profound realization, because the profound realization cannot be expressed through any gestures or any words or any expressions. At the beginning, you will need some knowledge. You will need some language to point, to give you some pointers to the realization. But once you have the genuine genuine realization, language cannot express such realization. So, in fact, understanding from the aspect of the core of the Dharma is the most important. The profound dharma is not explicitly explained, but when it uh, and over here it talks about only grasping onto words and literary meanings is not uh, the kind of uh, genuine bodhisattva. There are the two dharmas. When Maitreya heard this explanation, he addressed the Buddha, world honored one, this is unprecedented. It is as you have explained. I will distantly transcend such evils and maintain the dharma of Anuttara Samyasambodhi that the Talagata has accumulated over immeasurable some chaos of kalpas, and then uh, Maitreya stated saying that I will definitely 
give up all of these faults that you stated you stated before, such as arrogance, such as belittling, such as doubts, and so on. And I will definitely man maintain the Anatta Laksamyak Samadhi that you have accumulated over so many kalpas, immeasurable kalpas. On one hand, we are born in this dark age. I'm sure we all have lots of afflictions. But on the other, I think we're really fortunate. We've already encountered such profound dharma. So out of all the gains that you can receive, this is the most valuable gain you can gain in your lifetime, the most meaningful. If in the future there are good men and women who seek the Mahayana, I will make certain that they get hold of such sutras. So Maitreya, in front of Shakyamuni Buddha, he made this aspiration, saying that in the future, all the good men and women who seek the Mahayana Dharma, I will try my best and I will make sure that they will get hold of the sutra and I will definitely expound the Dharma that you taught. I will not just um, brush it off my shoulder, rather I'll carry it on my shoulder. This is my responsibility because this is what you bestowed to me. So through the blessings of Maitreya Bodhisattva, that we listened to this teaching. And lots of people listen to this class, listen to this teaching. It is all because of Bodhisattva Maitreya's blessings. Using their power of mindfulness, I will cause them to receive and maintain, read and recite, and extensively explain them for others. So he's saying that, make sure that they'll then receive, recite, write, and chant, and expound, and maintain. This is, uh, all of these kind of activities are included in other translation editions. And we're honored ones, Maitreya continued to say, if in the later age, in the dark age, there are those able to receive, maintain, read, recite, and explain them for others. One should understand that these will all be established by Maitreya's numinous power. So it's all because of my power. Well, if <laughs> later on in the later age, there are lots of people who can read and recite and explain, then it's all because of me, all because of my numinous power, my blessings. So I think now Maitreya Bodhisattva, upon seeing that so many of us listening to this teaching, he could report it back to Shakyamuni Buddha, and uh, I think Shakyamuni Buddha would be very happy about his report too. The Bodhisattva, uh, there was a, in the commentary, there was a story told over here about the numinous power. During Shakyamuni Buddha's age or time, um, there was this uh, Brahmin who was very smart. And, uh, but he was very arrogant. He asked the Buddha, saying that, well, if I were to become a monk, can I be as great as you? Uh, Buddha said no. And then the Brahman continued to say, can I be as great as uh, Shravakas, such as uh, <laughs> Murugalya Gayana and uh, Shriputra and so on? And uh, the Buddha said no. <laughs> and after he asked about the 500 people on the list of the disciples of the Buddha, the Buddha said no. So the Brahman said that, well, if I can do that this lifetime, so how about my future lifetime? The Buddha said yes, in the future time. So after he died, and uh, after 100 years of uh, the Parinirvana of uh, 
Parinirvana of uh, 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 Shakyamuni Buddha, then this Brahmin was reborn, and his name was uh, uh, Upavida, and uh, he was uh, born in the Ashoka's time. He was a great uh, master at that time. Anyhow, he was, re re he was reborn as uh, Upa Vita. And he, in fact, led lots of people and guided lots of people on the path of liberation. He then kept a record of the ones uh, who then attained liberation through his help. He would only count the ones as for example, if within a family there is a wife and husband, if only one of them took refuge and uh, study with him and then attain liberation, he wouldn't count them. He only counted the, the whole family. And uh, he then count, he then accumulated lots of uh, little wood chips that uh, counted the, the, the numbers and uh, that filled the whole house. And at that time, he then saw this starving dog and uh, he fed a little bit to the dog. He shared his meal to the dog, same as his disciples. And because he had so many disciples and everyone shared half of their meal to the starving dog, the dog died uh, because of overeating. And then the, all of them sat beside the, beside the dog and, and chanted for the dog. The dog, although died because of um, overeating through the feeding of uh, uh, Upavita and his disciples, but he didn't die uh, from a sense of uh, anger. And then uh, he, in fact, died with a sense of uh, uh, love towards all of them. And because of such merit, the dog then reborn in the um, in the Mara's uh, celestial realm, and he was sitting beside the Mara. And the Mara at first was then enjoying this meal with the dog, but through his numinous penetration, he realized this is a dog, and he got really angry, and uh, he thought that it must be um, you, uh, Yupavita. Therefore, he then came down to human realm, and he manifested this flower, this uh, flower, um, uh, he made uh, uh, this flower crown and then put it on top of uh, uh, Yupavita. And Yupavita as an arhat, he was meditating, he was in samadhi, and he did not realized that until he woke up from, uh, he came out from Samadhi. And then when he saw that, he, through his numinous penetration, he transformed the dog's corpse, which was already rotting at that time, into a flower necklace, and then put it on top of uh, the uh, Mara's neck. And on, at the moment that it touches Mara's neck, the flower necklace turned back into the stinky corpse of the dog. And at that time, uh, as, as much as Mara tried to take that off, he couldn't. So he had to beg Upavita, uh, saying that, could you please take it off? I'll, I'll fulfill all your wishes. And then, uh, Upavita replied to him, OK, I have two requirements. First, you have to promise that you won't harm the practitioners. He said, OK. And then the second requirement is saying that, uh, well, since Mara lived for a longer period of time, therefore, he saw uh, Shakyamuni Buddha in person. So, uh, so uh, 
Upavita then asking him to manifest into uh, Shakyamuni Buddha's form so that he could see how Buddha looked like. And then Mara said, I can do that, but don't prostrate to me. And then uh, he transformed himself into the Buddha. But because the form is so beautiful, Upavita couldn't help and completely forgot about his promise of not prostrating to the Buddha's uh, form that is manifest uh, that is man uh, that is uh, um, manifested from the Mara's body, and then he prostrated, and then. The Mara, the Mara uh, was really upset in saying that you've already said you are not going to prostrate to me. But at the moment he prostrated, uh, Mara was able to take off the dog, uh, the, the sinky dog's corpse. And uh, the Mara said that, how could you do that to me? You, uh, I've made lots of disturbance and obstacles uh, to the Buddha and to many Buddhas, in fact, but they've never harmed me. Whatsoever obstacles I've created and whatsoever harms I've created to them. But look at you, you threw this stinky dog to me. And then uh, Upavita said, well, they are Buddhas. I'm only an Arhat. What can you do about it? Master Sun Zhao, in fact, said that, in, in fact, he uh, made this great commentary on this Vimalakirti Sutra, and uh, um, he was very much attracted to Taoism teaching, such as Zhuangzi and Laozi and so on. But the moment he read Vimalakirti Sutra, he completely was drawn to it and uh, started uh, to study with uh, uh, Kumar Jiva. And then he gave teachings on it and made commentaries on it. Although he lived a short time, but he, uh, in fact, did quite a wonderful commentary. And lots of great masters, such as Master Sun Zhao and, uh, so, and uh, Master Hui Yuan and so on. They, all uh, studied extensively about this sutra. So I really encourage you to put it in your, put this text, in this sutra, in your, uh, on your shrine, and uh, you can propagate it, you can teach it, and so on, because this teaching carries the luminous power of Maitreya uh, Bodhisattva as well as uh, Shakyamuni Buddha, so it is quite important. And then at that time, the Buddha said, excellent, excellent, Maitreya. It is, it is as you have explained, I am very happy for it. I really rejoice. So this, till here, the, uh, this course between the Buddha and Maitreya Bodhisattva is ended. And then the next one uh, talks about at this, all the Bodhisattvas held their palms together and addressed the Buddha. We too, after the Buddha's near, uh, Nirvana will extensively disseminate the Dharma of Anadalak Samyak Sambodhi throughout the countries of ten directions. We will also guide those who explain the Dharma and cause them to obtain this sutra. So through the uh, skillful means of giving teaching, we will then disseminate this teaching to the countries of ten directions. This part, countries of the ten directions, is not specifically listed in, in the Tibetan version of translation, but well, it's a similar meaning. So, throughout countries of ten directions, therefore, we should use different languages, such as English, and Korean, and Japanese, German, French, and, and uh, Greek and Latin, uh, and those Latin languages, and, and especially African uh, languages, and to Africa. I think today we have really good cause and conditions. Um, people may feel that is it because of some uh, uh, some African people is here. Uh, well, that's. In fact, we have some special connections, special auspicious connections, and that hopefully we will have such opportunity to expound this dharma to different 
places, different countries with different languages uh, as monastics, as lay practitioners. We should disseminate this Dharma to different countries in the West and in in, uh, to the African uh, continent, which has 54 countries. So first, yes, we need skillful means to use uh, material means or to use um, uh, loving words, to use the four attractions first, and then later we need to disseminate the language. Uh, we need to disseminate the Dharma. And later on, we can use different languages to expound the Dharma as well. Of course, we'll encounter lots of obstacles. You should be ready for it. Just recently, we had this meeting uh, because some of our constructions over here uh, encountered some difficulty. And a Kimbo came to me saying that, why are we so unlucky? Why did it happen to us? In fact, this is not only happening to us this year. It happens every year. It happens to all the projects, all the constructions, and so on. But this kind of hardships that we would encounter during the dissemination of the Dharma is very normal, and we should then face them with a very strong heart. Around March, when we first started teaching, at that time, at that time, I think uh, back then, uh, lots of things happened and uh, lots of uh, um, different uh, conditions was there and lots of uh, um, insecurities was permeating in, different, in people's hearts. But anyhow, we persisted till now. We finished with this teaching. So we should then propagate this dharma to the uh, southern continent of uh, uh, Jambuvipa as well as <laughs> the countries of ten directions. Do not just limit yourself to all the big countries, the first tier countries such as Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou, and so on. I know there are lots of monks who would go to all those big cities such as uh, um, these kind of cities, but when it comes to the third tier, uh, third tier cities such as uh, um, Guizhou and uh, different kind of uh, rural areas in China, they then get quite terrified. They don't want to go. And uh, I think now we need to make, aspira uh, make aspiration to go to Lesotho, Malawi, uh, uh, J uh, Johannesburg <laughs> and <laughs> all of those African <laughs> places. I think to go there, it would be quite <laughs> auspicious <laughs> and really <laughs> supreme. <laughs> best. The, the next one says, then the four heavenly kings addressed the Buddha, world honored one, every place, whether city, village, mountain, forest, or wilderness, where, this, where there are those who read, recite, explain these scriptures, we will then lead our palace retainers in proceeding to those places, all of our retinues, all of our friends to then protect them, to listen to the Dharma and protect these people. I think this time during the teaching, though we cannot see it through our uh, eye faculty, but I'm sure they do not lie. Do we have all the four heavenly kings over here? I, I know sometimes they get really busy. Maybe just uh, some of them uh, who brought some of their retinues, but I'm sure they have. <coughs> And for an area of a hundred yujanas, we will make it convenient to hear their explanations without seeking, which means the four heavenly kings, they will protect the sentient be uh, the beings who are teaching and who are then listening to this uh, teaching and protect all of them from the Maras. 
and expel all the Maras to the area of um, outside of the hundred Ujjanas. So now we have uh, Indra. Remember last chapter, Indra was uh, pledging to protect the sutra and teaching of the sutra, and as well as the four heavenly kings, the Dharmapalas, as well as uh, the protectors in on the Tibetan plateau. They've also pledged to protect the Dharma. I'm sure it's not that they only protected the tantra, uh, the tantra teaching. In fact, that they then also protect the sutras, uh, the, the sutra yana teachings as well. Uh, just as uh, last uh, two days we made this protection, uh, we we have this uh, protector offering <coughs> festival where we make offering to all the protectors who protect us and protect the Dharma. And I notice uh, how the beautiful rainbows, the beautiful clouds and skies and so on, I'm sure they have lots of power to uh, make such kind of uh, uh, protection to us. Therefore, I really hope when the Surgama Sutra starts, <laughs> you should also come and protect <laughs> us. <laughs> I think I'm <laughs> being very uh, practical <laughs> over here. I hope you've accepted <laughs> my, <laughs> you've accept, accepted my <laughs> invitation. Sometimes, <laughs> when we finish one project, uh, the, the <laughs> staff member and volunteer asking me whether they can take a vacation. I said, well, vacation is not important. The importance is that we'll have, a, in fact, another project starting. So <laughs> anyhow, protecting this one is great, but we have another sutra of um, uh, Suragama Sutra teaching is coming up, so please protect us. At this point, uh, the Buddha told Ananda, no, uh, after the protectors, and then to the Ananda, saying that, well, first, Ananda, you should accept and practice the sutra well yourself and maintain the sutra and disseminate it extensively to the Shravakas and particular Buddhas. And Ananda said, Assur assuredly, I have already accepted and maintained its essential world honored one. However, I have a question. What is the name of the sutra? Sometimes at the very end, uh, then the name will, uh, the sutra will be named. Just as uh, whenever we write an essay, sometimes we uh, write any articles, usually we'll finalize the name at the very end. So lots of sutra, in fact, uh, explains or uh, state the name at the end. So the Buddha said, Ananda, this sutra is named Discourse of Vimalakirti, which is um, then the most important, <coughs> which then is based on the person who then, did, uh, who then expounded this. Or the sutra expounded by the undefiled one because his name is undefiled, remember? It is also called the Dharma gate of the inconceivable emancipation because the teaching given in this sutra it talks about the emptiness, the, the Buddha nature aspect, the, the luminosity aspect of the sutrayana as well as Vajrayana teachings. So it is then also could be called the Dharma gate of the inconceivable emancipation. As such, you should accept and maintain it. When Buddha finished exp explaining this sutra, the elder Vimalakirti, which is the men uh, protagonist in this sutra, and then followed by Manushri, Shariputra, Ananda, and all the great congregation of gods and humans and shuras, hearing that the Buddha had explained, and then they all rejoiced greatly. So they feel really happy about it. I think in the West, and in the movies, and uh, in uh, the play, usually they have this 
opening scene. And then they have uh, the main part of the story and then the concluding part. Just as uh, in the commentary of uh, great masters where they said that at the beginning they have uh, this beautiful opening scene and then in the middle they have uh, this long part talks about the stories, the discourses, the teachings and uh, all the beautiful manifestations. Lots of beautiful stories with the profound meanings. So when we're studying it, during the course of our study, I think the sense of inconceivable, profound teaching is very much impressive and very vivid and presenting in front of your eyes. So through the blessings of Vimalakirti, through the blessings of Bodhisattvas and Buddhas, um, I think we have such opportunity to listen to it and uh, um, also manifesting as this lay practitioner. He then set this example to all the lay practitioners to show that lay practitioners could also have such kind of uh, um, high level of realization. So as a lay practitioners, the monastics, uh, people from different countries, different ethnics, uh, with different language, different languages, we should all really rejoice. I myself, I'm very happy as well. At the very beginning, in fact, I was concerned if uh, there would be any um, obstacles, hardship, and so on, but now, We've successfully completed the teaching of the entire text. I, I'm, I myself, I am very grateful to the protectors. We have never interrupted the offering to the protectors, which brings, uh, which uh, brings uh, or calls for the protectors' blessings to help us. Also, the translator team who provided uh, the translation to different uh, uh, language or different uh, language speaking audiences, I think they also really worked very hard. So I thank them very much as well. Uh, I am also thankful to my video streaming team. It's not an easy task. We have the begin be, uh, before class chanting, we have after class chanting. In fact, it requires lots of the very meticulous work and the very persisting long work as well. So very thankful. Uh, another team I would like to thank is the transcription uh, transcripts team. Every class, the t the transcripts would come up, and uh, later on, hopefully, we use such transcripts to then publish to publish this book. Because I think after each class, it's quite important to write it down in words. Master Kuechi, in fact, he said that he would uh, then work on the notes and uh, commentary of this Vimalakirti Sutra uh, before the, uh, every night before the teaching on the second day. Master Kuechi's studying and Master Kuechi's translation with Master Kumar Jiva. He's very independent. He's also very diligent. So continued for a long period of time to finish the commentary. So I know how difficult it is to uh, then transcribe and to make the commentaries and so on. Also, thanks to the design team who made the flyers and posters, and uh, for lots of the volunteers uh, who worked in different aspects of the whole uh, completion of our Dharma class. Some of them we cannot see, some of them we, ca we can't, some of them uh, we know, some of them we don't. And at the end, <laughs> I would like to thank to our audience. Without you, I won't be able to expound. And the last one I would like to thank is myself, who then tried my best to give the teaching. And because of such auspicious connections, such causes and conditions, we have 
we had this opportunity to um, expound this dharma in this age. Also, the lots of uh, volunteers who are not uh, really nominated over here on my throne. I also thank you very much because without you, without all of us together, we won't be able to have such success. So now let's uh, then do a short talk offering. What does talk mean? Talk offering means that during the process of uh, our studying and practicing of the Dharma, uh, so we can use this opportunity to confess all of our impure intentions, all of our defilements during such courses in front of bodhisattvas and uh, Buddhas. And uh, we can also make the aspiration to all the great masters in this world to uh, turn the wheel of Dharma. And uh, for the benefit of such beings, please may they turn the wheel of Dharma. So let's then make the talk offering. And we should eat at uh, the time after we said alala ho. It's, it's the best that you eat after we chat that. Don't, not before that. You can eat a little bit, drink a little bit, make a little bit offering to the protectors. I think today you're doing a good job in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, where you place all all of our uh, toke offering uh, food. Sometimes I see people are just always looking down. They are not really looking at others. They're just passing things to others without even looking at other people, looking into other people's eyes. So just look and then pass. I know that there are people listening to this teaching online. For those of you who are listening online, prepare some food and some drink. And then when we, after chant alala ho, uh, you can then uh, visualize that this food and drink is blessed by the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and then take it yourself as a blessing. Uh, I think <laughs> If everyone could uh, attend a class as uh, today, that would be wonderful. Anyhow, I'm very, very happy. Because it's very difficult to say how many opportunities we would have after this teaching. Uh, when Ponsa Gurumuchi was, uh, or when, Pon uh, when Ponsa Gurumuchi finished any kind of a long teaching, such as uh, the Bartle teaching or uh, the uh, adornments of Mahayana Sutra and uh, the Pramana teachings and so on, um, usually. Ponsa Gurumbuche would uh, then give us uh, just some very little candy because at that time we didn't really have lots of, uh, we didn't have abundant material, food. So, but still, we're very happy to receive it and enjoy it to with everyone with a great Sangha. Anyhow, we then successfully completed this teaching of the Sutra. Next Monday and next Tuesday, we will start the teaching of Suragama Sutra. <coughs> So be prepared. I think uh, that's all. And uh, now let's chant uh, the Tsuk offering uh, chants. And then after that, we'll make the aspiration, the King Samadabhadra's aspiration. And today we will still stay on post for the last classes uh, discussion group after class discussion group okay <laughs>